Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be my second video about consensus sequences and sequence logos. I highly recommend you to watch my first video about uh, consensus sequences because in this video I am going to touch that uh, only briefly. And if you would take a look at this uh, left uh, picture, what you would see? You would see that uh, here we have some DNA sequence. This is DNA because we have thymine here, so this is not RNA. And we have here uh, one sequence that is highly conserved. So if we compare many sequences at the position 1, 2 and 3, we would always would find uh, adenine, thymine and guanine. And at, at the position minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, we can uh, actually find any of the bases. So this type of uh, visual presentation is not very convenient because uh, there is too much informational noise here. So what you usually do with uh, noise, whether it is audio noise or informational noise, you try to get rid of it. So instead of uh, all these letters, we basically can say that N here, and here, and here, and N here. That means any base is possible here. And then we have adenine, thymine, and guanine. And again we have uh, informational noise here, so N again. So now as you see it would be much more easier for us uh, to use this information and uh, because we get right of the informational noise here. And this is exactly what we can see on this picture on the right. So on the top we see basically the same application of probability of uh, occurrence of uh, one of the four bases in a certain position. So it is hard to use for us. And now uh, informational uh, noise reduced and now we see some pattern, we see uh, those places in the DNA that is highly conserved. So now we can uh, use this information and it is much easier for us to use than if you would compare for example with uh, what we see on the top picture. So as you see here our scale would be between 0 and 1 and this is probability 1 here stands for 100 percent. So for example if we see only A letter here that means that in this position we only have adenine and if we have uh, 50 percent here for uracil so that means that in 50 percent of the sequences we would have uracil here. On the second picture you see that uh, here we are using beads and maximum uh, value here is 2 bits. And on the next slide I will explain why we are using bits here and why we are getting such a pattern. Uh, but before that uh, let me return to this picture again. Why do we see here ATG instead of AUG as you know that is going to be start codon. And imagine that uh, here we have double stranded DNA so now we see that two uh, DNA strands separated and new strand of the messenger RNA is made. And here is going to be 5 prime end of the messenger RNA and 3 prime end here. And it would grow in this direction continuously. And as you know Starcodon would be messenger RNA sequence that is going to be A U G and here we have a sequence that we call uh, 5 prime U T R or untranslated region and uh, to which uh, ribosome would later bind and uh, what the sequence we would find on the uh, template strand of the DNA. So this is DNA double stranded DNA and on the template strand of the DNA we would find a complementary sequence that is going to be T, A and C. So as you see 
we have start codon here that is neither T A C nor A U G. So what the sequence we would find on the other strand of the DNA, which we call coding sequence. So thymine would be pair with adenine, and this adenine would be pair with thymine, and cytosine here would be pair with guanine. So A T G, and this is exactly what we see here. So uh, here would be sequence and uh, we would find all the motifs and uh, all the sequences that refer to coding strand of the DNA. So this strand of the DNA would be coding, coding, and this strand of the DNA uh, would be template strand of the DNA. And also we would have three prime and here, five prime and here, and we also would have five prime and here, and three prime and here. As you see, uh, coding uh, sequence of the DNA would have the same prime ends as messenger RNA, so five prime and here, and five prime and of the coding strand of the DNA, three prime and here, and three prime and of the coding strand of the DNA. And basically the sequence of the messenger RNA and coding sequence uh, of the DNA, uh, coding strand of the DNA would be the same. So those we see here that AUG and ATG here, but uh, the only difference would be that in messenger RNA, thymine would be substituted with uracil. So please pay attention uh, what you see uh, in the uh, sequence logos, because uh, sequence here can be of the coding strand of the DNA, it also can be of the template strand of the DNA, or it can be a sequence of the messenger RNA. So uh, you have to pay attention. And as you see, for example, because we see your cells here, that means that, for example, this sequence would be sequence of the messenger RNA. Now let me move to next slide, uh, and in that slide I will explain uh, how uh, we are getting such picture from this picture. On this picture, as you see, we have 12 sequences that we align, and uh, letters here in this uh, sequence logo uh, would represent a frequency of the occurrence of uh, certain bases. So once again, this is DNA basis because we see thymine here, 12 sequences that we align. And as you see, uh, also what is interesting in this picture, we see a wave here. So what this wave represent? And this wave represent uh, turns of the DNA. So let's count. We start with minus 9 and here we have 0. So, or for example, here we have minus 5 and here we have 5. So between two peaks, we have about 10 bases. And as you know, uh, DNA makes a turn every 10.4 bases. So here would be one turn of the DNA. And why we need this information? And actually this is very important. Because as you see, for example, from this picture, that uh, most uh, highly conserved sequences would be at the top of this um, wave. And this is because the top of the wave uh, would represent major groove of the DNA. So let me highlight it. So this is going to be major groove of the DNA. And this is also going to be major groove of the DNA. And here we would have minor groove of the DNA and minor minor groove of the DNA here. Now I predict your next question, why we have a most sequence that is going to be conserved uh, in this major grooves and in minor grooves we would have uh, informational noise. And the next slide I will explain why 
first of all, what uh, double-stranded DNA represent. Uh, let's take a look uh, and start with this picture of the uh, phone cord. And basically, this is what our double-stranded DNA represents. In many pictures of the DNA, we have a wrong impression of uh, how uh, DNA twists, but uh, actually, just if you compare, uh, DNA would have, uh, we compare with this uh, phone cord, we would see in the DNA uh, minor uh, groove and major grooves. Now let's compare with this DNA minor, major, minor, and uh, minor, major, minor, major, minor, major. And once again, here's another model. So that has better uh, presentation of what double stranded DNA is. So we have major and minor grooves. And why it is important? Because most of the proteins, just like in, in the picture on the top, would uh, make connections with uh, major grooves and not with minor grooves because it doesn't have enough space to fit uh, proteins uh, between these two strands of the DNA. So most of the DNA binding proteins would bind to the major grooves. Now, uh, when we know this information, let's return to our previous slide and now you would understand better why uh, most uh, conserved uh, sequences we have in major grooves. Because uh, minor grooves would represent, we can compare them with introns. So, for example, this is going to be intron and this is going to be exon. Intron exon and again intron. So we can expect that uh, exon uh, wouldn't have uh, many uh, changes here, many mutations, because uh, any mutation here would lead to change in the protein sequence. But if we would compare with intron sequences, uh, any change here would be much better tolerated because uh, these sequences would be excess anyway and uh, wouldn't uh, code for any protein so mutations here would be um, much uh, better tolerated and if we compare different organisms and align genes and we would see uh, that uh, in introns uh, there are going to be much more uh, differences than if we compare uh, exons. So uh, the same is true for uh, DNA binding proteins. If these proteins would bind to major grooves, that means that in minor grooves uh, we may uh, see uh, more changes that wouldn't uh, affect binding protein. So in those places where protein would bind, we would see that uh, sequence would be conserved. And in those places where protein wouldn't bind, we would see that rate of mutation would be much higher. That's why in many different organisms, we would see different uh, bases here because uh, this basis basically doesn't affect uh, affinity of the DNA and binding protein. Now let's talk about how scientists uh, made possible to reduce this informational noise and to get more clear picture for us. And uh, now you see we have here not frequency of the uh, frequency of the basis but bits. And let me remind you what uh, the bit is. Uh, the bit of information or uh, also we can say binary information because B means 2. That, for example in computer computations uh, we just use um, zeros and ones. So yes and no. In logical switches we also can use off and on. 
So how uh, four bases uh, represent here two bits of information. Imagine we have um, cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine. Now let's separate them to four boxes and in order to find uh, any of the base we just need two bits of information or in other words we need to ask two questions. For example, let's say we have cytosine. How we can find that we have cytosine with two questions. And the first question would be, is it on the top? And the qu uh, answer would be yes. Second question, is it on the right? And the answer would be no. So this represents two bits. Let's think about guanine. And the first question would be, is it on the top? Yes. Is it on the right? Yes. We have one position of the guanine. Uh, as for adenine, is it on the top? No. Is it on the right? No. And this information is enough to find the position. Is it on the top? No. That means it is on the bottom. Is it on the right? No. That means that it is on the left. And with uh, so adenine and with uh, thymine, once again, two questions would be, is it on the top? No. So zero. Is it on the right? Yes. So with four uh, values, we just need two bits of uh, information to describe uh, these uh, values. That's why we have maximum here is two bits. And we have two bits when uh, some uh, base would be completely conserved. So as you see, cytosine, 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 cytosine here. And this represents two bits and this represents 100% uh, in frequency. So what is this logos? Uh, logos is basically when we take frequency, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4 cytosines. 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 12 would represent two sorts or 0 0.66 and we have to take a log of this number and actually we have to take logs of all the frequencies and this is uh, how uh, this uh, stacks uh, the height would be calculated. So this is how we get right of the noise. And my last note would be how do we know consensus sequence if, for example, here we don't have a line with consensus sequence of all these 12 sequences. And this is very easy. We just have to read all the bases that is going to be on the top. So those that with high frequencies would be on the top. So consensus sequence of uh, all these 12 sequences would be T, T, A, T, C, A, C, C, G, uh, C, C, G, G, T, G, T, A, A. And this is all for today. I hope this information have been helpful for you. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.